Welcome to the art project. We're going to do a project called Ribbons and Spheres. It's a project on perspective. The requirements are two or more windows on each pane, five or more spheres, and three or more ribbons. Demonstrate optical perspective with size, overlapping, and position on paper. So in the last video, I had already done a room using a method of perspective for this uh, grid. And then uh, starting here, I have erased some places to create windows and outline them a little bit darker so I can see through uh, a piece of copy paper. I then moved the whole thing over to a light table. You can use a exterior window uh, to do this and I put a piece of copy paper on top of my drawing. I traced all of the windows that I had made and then I used just that piece of paper to create the ribbons that I wanted. Uh, <clears throat> you can skip this step but I like this step because I don't mess up my grid and have to do a lot of erasing um, trying to create really good ribbons. Uh, the ribbons are a little bit of an assignment all of their own. Um, I show my students how to do ribbons a little bit earlier in the year to get some overlapping and twisting and that sort of thing. Once I have all of my ribbons um, going in and out of the windows the way that I want them to, I then take it and put it on um, underneath the um, drawing and line up the windows on the light table or on the window and I trace uh, so that all the ribbons are now on the grid. You'll notice I had gone over it with uh, Sharpie first so that I could see through the paper better. And uh, now I'm erasing all of the grid inside the ribbons. Once I have all of the grid of the room, the checkered of the room erased, I then place different size circles. Smaller circles go in the middle and larger circles towards the outside. Anything inside the circle is erased um, unless it's supposed to go in front of the circle. Uh, these circles will later, later be spheres and so I'm just erasing everything that's inside the sphere or everything that's inside a ribbon if the ribbon goes in front of the sphere. Once I've got everything laid out the way I want it, I then go over it with um, Sharpie. Uh, careful to you know make the round things round and the um, smooth things smooth. Try not to get too uh, too out of line or too off the mark, which is really difficult to do, of course, but. Uh, then I use a ruler to do the grid in the background. Uh, the ruler makes the Sharpie lines nice and straight and precise. Be careful not to go over ribbons or through spheres. After doing all of that, I fill in the windows with black Sharpie. Probably better to use two different size Sharpies, a Sharpie pen and a regular Sharpie to get, get them nice and black. And then I erase every uh, everything, all the pencil lines and all of that. I decided to use blue on my ribbons. I usually start out uh, with school colors and our school colors are blue and orange. So I did all of the ribbons blue. Then I went in and I put some shadows in various places to make the ribbons look more like they're going over and under and through the windows and over and under each other. Once I had uh, all the shadows on the ribbons the way that I wanted them to be, I then focused on the spheres and made those uh, orange. In order to make them orange, I did a little highlight on the top, filled in pretty dark with the orange around the bottom, using what I know on of how to shade in a sphere. And then I use red to get the shadows um, a little bit darker. I meant to go in with some black and I never, and, and darken the red, and I never actually did that. I think it looks all right anyway. 
once I got all of the spheres shaded in the way I wanted, I then moved to the tedious um, I then moved into the tedious act of doing all of the checkered. This is probably the hardest part, and so let me give you a few tips. Uh, well, it's not really the hardest part, but it is uh, definitely the part that takes the longest. So the more ribbons and spheres you add, the less checkers you have to fill in. Uh, if you imagine every place where there's a sphere, especially a large sphere, there's a lot less squares for me to um, trace, I mean to um, color in. So lots of spheres and ribbons at the beginning will save you time in the end. Another thing is to save color pencil and time, don't sharpen your pencil regularly. Fill in the biggest areas with a dull color pencil and then fill in the details and the sides and the corners with a sharp color pencil. Um, only sharpen your color pencil when you really need to and that will save you some trips to the pencil sharpener and it will um, it'll help you to get the, the... When you don't sharpen your color pencil it becomes real dull and the duller it is the wider it is and because it's wide it fills in big spaces faster so um, there's a little tip for you use a sharp one to do the sides and corners also have a little piece of paper underneath your uh, drawing while you're doing the edges so you can go off the sides that's pretty much all there is to it uh, I have um, filled it all in and uh, completed it. Uh, I thought about darkening the corners a little bit with some black, but I haven't gotten around to that. So what you see is what I have so far. I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope uh, you learned something from it. Uh, the more mistakes you make, the more you learn. So now it's your turn. Go and make some art.